Welcome to the Epcotion Adventure, a podcast where we'll talk about all things Disney, including tips and tricks, festivals and favorites, and the very latest in news and reviews. But we're still old enough to remember when walking from Mexico to China didn't include a trek to Norway. This is episode six, how to pack for a weekend at Disney, or one weekend, one backpack, challenge accepted. So now, please remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast as we embark on our Epcotion adventure. Howdy, folks, and welcome to Episode 6 of the Epcotion Adventure. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And today we're going to talk about how to pack for a weekend trip to Walt Disney World. Yay! Yay! Back so to Disney! Yay! <laughs> in the last few podcasts, we've talked about how to do it on a budget, some splurges you can do, some of our favorite snacks. So now let's talk about the nuts and bolts of a trip. Let's talk about how to pack for a trip. Now, everybody who's listening to this has packed for a trip before. We're not going to tell you how many pairs of underwear to take, and don't forget your toothbrush. This is going to be very specific to wait, a Disney... Wait, wait, Underwear? You're, you're supposed um, to pack underwear for four... Uh, oh, this is awkward. Hmm. Yeah. Awkward. Um, okay, well, I'll go over that with you later, but okay, for our general right. population, they well, don't the need to hear that. the dog doesn't wear underwear. I well, just assumed... True. She would look cute, though. So I'm not supposed to pee on the lawn, either, then. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, the neighbors oh, complained again. Okay. So, this is going to be specific to a Disney trip. <laughs> okay. So, the very first thing I want to talk about is I want to extol the many, many virtues of a lounge fly backpack. They're made by the same people who make Mary Poppins carpet bag. I swear, <laughs> I do not own a lounge fly or a fanny pack, but every time we go on a Disney trip, Sue takes one of her many... There's uh, not that many. There's a lot. Okay, it's growing. Think of Melda Margos and shoes. No, okay. no, no, no. No. Not yet. We will take a backpack, and she's able to get things in there that shouldn't fit. Bottles of water. Yet. Lightsabers. <laughs> the lightsaber didn't actually fit in the lounge fly, but... Uh, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. They are the perfect size. They're called a mini backpack. They fit on your back very well without being huge. They fit very nicely in the bottom of a roller coaster car when you're going on and want to loop it over your leg, do that little purse trick that women do. And if you're going to ride Tron, they fit in a locker. Yeah, that's a really important thing that we just learned is that Tron does have a locker system like Harry Potter at Universal because you cannot take anything with you on the ride. So they do have a free locker there and the lounge fly does fit in there. That's a huge thing because a normal size backpack does not. And they fit everything. You can put all of your daily needs in there, plus an entire full bottle of water, which is huge. And I don't know how it does it, but it does it. So that is my first tip, is to get a really good bag for the park. Please, please, please don't take a tote or something that you have to put over your arm. You will set it down and forget it, or something's going to come flying out the top. If you have larger things, such as your luggage, because you're on a day trip there from the airport... Look at putting your luggage into the luggage storage at the airport, like at MCO, or outside the parks. They actually do have luggage-sized lockers. Right, if you didn't leave it in the trunk of your car, which if you have a car, obviously leave it there. Right. But do take a small bag in with you. Fanny packs are also great. Something that's not hands-on. That's one of the reasons I love my lounge fly. And it allows me to have a little fandom showing, whatever <laughs> that may be, Star Some Wars, ones... Harry Potter. Some of the ones we just found, or that Sue just found, I should say, for Emperor's New Groove are epic. They're so cute. And the one that I finally just got, you know what? Here's the thing about lounge flies. If you see one you like, get it, because they are all limited edition. Every one of them. And they don't tell you this. So I learned this the hard way. But I finally just got my hands on the Dapper Dan one, and I am so in love with it. It's pretty cool. It's awesome. So that's my first tip. One thing you're going to find what we're talking about today is how to do this minimal, minimal, as little as possible. <laughs> good, good save. Thank you. So now what to put in that bag. Uh, one of the things that we always bring is a liquid IV. And if you're not familiar with this product, there are other brands out there. We particularly like this one. But what it is, is a powder that comes uh, in just a little package that you 
rip open and dump into your water. And it is a hydrator. So it multiplies the hydration aspects of the water by, I think, three times. Yeah, it also has electrolytes and things like that that really do help you stay hydrated. But it also keeps your stamina up, which if you're in that Disney heat and specifically humidity, yep. you need that extra little boost during the day of stamina. And this is something if you when you get into your older years and still visit Disney, you really do need. You really do. And Liquid IV happens to have some really great flavors that we like. If you're looking at this for the first time and you want to start out, we love the cherry, the watermelon, and the pina colada. Oh, and I love the tangerine. Oh, and the grape. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Really, all the flavors are good. Pick what you like, and it'll be a good one. Those are available through Amazon. You can also buy them in bulk at Costco or BJ's. Yeah, and Liquid IV has their own side as well. The other thing that we find essential is a fuel rod or a battery pack for your phone. You will be on your phone constantly, whether you like it or not. Even if you choose not to use Genie Plus, you're still going to be in communication with the rest of your party. You're going to be taking pictures all day. There's going to be all kinds of things you're going to need your phone for, and you're definitely going to want to have an ability to refuel your Your phone. phone, Yeah, (laughs) fuel rods are available all over the Disney parks and hotels. You can also find them at the MCO Orlando Airport, at the Tampa Airport, at Sanford. At most airports. Yeah, they all have a fuel rod vending machine, and they're free to exchange at most locations. Now, the initial purchase will cost you, I believe it's $30. All you do is you plug it in just like you would plug your phone into the wall. It comes with a tiny little cable, and you plug it into the fuel rod, and you plug the other end into your phone, and it recharges your battery. It's pretty brilliant. And when your fuel rod is empty, you pop it into one of those machines. It spits out a new one for you, completely free of charge, and you carry on with the new one. Yeah, initially when you purchase it, like Sue said, it does come with a cable that does fit both iPhone and Android phones. Another thing that we always, always, always bring into the park is hand sanitizer. Ever since COVID, of course, it's everywhere and those places still are everywhere, but it's not always reliable. Sometimes they're empty. Sometimes you get a handful of what feels like just snot. (laughs) Like It's not pleasant. Or bubbles. Or bubbles. We like the spray kind that I can just stick in the small pocket of the lounge fly and we can I can spray my hand, reach around, spray Rod's hand, we're done. Okay, let's uh, talk to the parents there for just a moment. We're going to have a small moment of reality. Please do not let your children lick the poles. Why do we have to even say this? But I don't know. nearly every time we go, if you're in line for Frozen... If you're in line for Peter Pan, any place that the children are going to be for a long period of time, apparently they like the taste of the metal poles. It sounds weird, but every, every time. Yeah, seriously, if you're not paying attention, look around because you will find a small child licking a stanchion somewhere. Yes. So the next thing we always like to bring is the small travel size of a Kleenex pack. Yeah. Now, that's invaluable, actually. It really is. You don't know when you're going to get a cold, if you're going to get allergies that were unexpected but they also make fantastic napkins yeah for epcot for epcot <laughs> if you can't if you forget the napkin grab a kleenex they really do work well absolutely and if you get that stall where there's no toilet paper it comes in very valuable in there yeah, as well a little too much information but yes that is true <laughs> that's very true the other thing is of course band-aids i like the waterproof ones or moleskin for blisters on your feet One very nice thing about Band-Aids that a lot of people don't realize is if you go to the first aid station at any of the Disney parks, they will give you free Band-Aids. And a Minnie Mouse sticker. And that's true. And sometimes the Band-Aids actually have Mickey or Minnie on them, too. Yes. Which is kind of cool. It's like a little... It's like a little um, badge of honor. I got hurt (laughs) at Epcot, and I have Mickey on me. Here's the really cool thing, too. Every single park has a central first aid. So if you need to do anything... uh, uh, When I was there one time, I had a huge wound on my leg. I just needed a clean place to change my bandages, and we went to first aid. They gave me a little room. I was able to do it in a safe, clean place and go out and tackle the rest of the park. They also will help you with any unexpected allergies or sunburn. They deal a lot with sunburn and heat stroke, heat exhaustion, 
if you're needing first aid for anything, they are there for you and they're ready and willing to help you. At Epcot, they're located at the Odyssey Restaurant location, which is actually in, I'm going to say Future World again. <laughs> it's Future World. I'm not sure which of the world locations it's considered. It's at the top left corner of Future World as you enter the park next to the Mexico Pavilion. And we won't go over locations for all of the parks, but they are there in all of the parks. And ask any cast member. They will gladly point them out to you or in an emergency be able to call and have somebody come to you. Yep. So um, some other unexpected things that we like to take with us or maybe a little bit unusual things. The leashes for your glasses or sunglasses. Or your children. <laughs> no? No. 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 Okay. These are a little different. So those those ones that strap around your neck like an old person and let you hang your glasses down on your chest. They really are helpful because it makes you feel like your glasses are a little more secure when you go on the rides. And you don't have to get the librarian kind with like 15 links of chain <laughs> on them. If you go into Walgreens or CVS or Walmart, any place that sells glasses, usually even the readers will have those leashes. The ones we like are made out of neoprene because if you're on a water ride, they don't get funky. <laughs> and they stay put. Yes. It's not like a chain where it's rattling all over. But it's great for riding roller coasters as well. It, it keeps the glasses on your head, but it also keeps them on your head when you're on Guardians, for instance. <laughs> exactly. And they actually did stay in place, so that was good. Another thing we like to make sure we have with us is a little bit of protein. So we enjoy having a, either a protein bar, maybe a kind bar, or just a little pack of almonds, yeah. something with us that we can just grab. I mean, everywhere you look at Disney, there's going to be food. So it's not about having more food with you. But it's about being in a line that's longer than expected. or And having the right food with you. That's just a tiny little bit of protein goes yeah. a long way towards keeping you from getting hangry. A small packet of almonds is our favorite. But yeah, like Sue said, the kind bars, the chocolate sea salt. Oh, those are so good. Oh my goodness, I love those things. And they're available in the parks a lot of times or in the airports even. Just one of those little tips to keep on hand. So something you may not have thought of or may have seen other people doing and wondering why they're doing it, the cooling towels mm, have yes. been lifesavers for us. You just wet them. They go around your neck. They stay nice and cool. They cool you off immediately. That's why we prefer them over the personal fans, but a lot of people carry personal fans as well. The important thing is to find some way to cool yourself off in a hurry. I've started purchasing shirts by the company Arctic Chill. Oh, good I tip. actually have three of those. They're made out of the same basic material as the cooling towels, but in the form of like a polo shirt. And if they get wet, they're going to keep you cool throughout the day by 10, maybe 15 degrees. Those shirts are available at arcticchill.com, also on Amazon. And again, we're not selling anything. We don't have links for you to those things. It's just things that we've tried and we enjoy. These are a few of our favorite things. <laughs> so a couple other things that I'm just going to hit on real quick that we like to take into the park. An extra pair of socks. This is especially if you're going to be riding water rides. Nobody wants wet socks. But also, it's Florida. It's, it's going to rain. rain every day. Three o'clock <laughs> in the summer, it's going to rain every day. Or whenever day. we go into Nor Earth. Norway or Spaceship Earth. <laughs> it does. It's, we're cursed. Every time we ride Spaceship <laughs> Earth or Frozen, the immediately after we come out, it has rained or yeah, is raining. I don't, at I don't the know time. what the deal is. But those extra socks really, really do come in handy. Also, if you're a girl or you have longer hair, think about bringing a hair tie with you. There's so many times I've gotten into the park and needed something to get the hair off my, off my neck, off my back. Just having a little hair tie that you can slip on is a lifesaver. And then the last thing that I'm just going to mention that I like to bring with me is some pennies. And you can use these for the penny machine. You don't really need them anymore. They do take cards. But I don't like to pass up an opportunity to make a wish. So Aww. if you have pennies with you, you are allowed to make wishes. All of those collected coins do go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So they actually do serve a good purpose. And who doesn't need to make a wish? I like that. It is a very good tip that most people wouldn't think about. And please, when I say tip, I don't mean leaving pennies for tips. <laughs> Cast members work hard. Jamie, thank you for all you do at Aww. Mama Melrose's. As a matter of fact, if uh, you're at Hollywood Studios, make sure and stop by and say hey to Jamie at Mama Melrose's. And, and if then you leave tip her, her really well. If you leave her a penny for a tip, we will hunt you down. It's true. 
So now we're gonna move on to what to actually pack for your vacation. Now in the beginning of this, in the little intro, we did sort of tease the fact that we could do this in one backpack, and we have. Yes, many times. Several times. Some of the less expensive airlines that we talked about two episodes ago, they do not include a carry-on bag, believe it or not. It's just weird. If you're used to flying Southwest or American or Delta, United, the majors like that, you don't even think about a carry-on as being a cost. However, if you're doing one of those airlines that we did talk about in the previous episode, Sun Country, Allegiant, Spirit, and Frontier, all will charge you for a carry-on. Now, if you have a small backpack, what they would consider a personal item, that still travels free as long as it fits under the seat in front of you. And, this is a big one, it fits within the size parameters that they have listed on their web pages. Believe it or not, they're not all the same. Check before you purchase the ticket to make sure that they're not going to charge you for a roll-on bag. And if so, then the backpack. And I know, ladies, I know what you're thinking. You can't possibly do this. You can. It is possible. Here's the trick for those of us who are carrying the backpacks into the park. These are two different backpacks. You have one item. The bag that you're taking into the park with you, so for me would be my lounge fly, has to go inside the item that you are putting under the seat on the airplane. So if I have a backpack that I am carrying as my personal item, my lounge fly has to go inside that other backpack. So it takes some creative packing. You have to do the little roll and stuff thing that you have to do to get everything to fit. You have one pair of shoes that you are wearing on your feet. Nothing else is in the, is in the backpack. You have one pair of jeans, and yes, it will not kill you to wear it the second day. And you just have to get super creative, but it can be done. The nice thing about Florida, too, is that you're probably going to be packing shorts, which are very easy to roll up and put into a backpack. So if you wear your jeans or your longer pants on the days that you travel and then wear the shorts into the park, it really does minimize what you have to travel with in your backpack. Very true. That's an excellent point. So some of the other things that we definitely recommend bringing Back to the shoes that I talked about. Make sure that whatever shoes you're wearing, they are not brand new out of the box. Make sure that you have worn them in, but not worn them out. They have to be comfortable enough to carry you through the park. We see so many people wear Crocs, and it just makes me hurt every time. If you're a Crocs fan, more power to you. I would love to know how you do it. We're not Team Crocs. (laughs) We are not, only because it's plastic rubbing against your feet all day long. We talked to first aid not very long ago when we went in there for something, and they said that the most often complaint is blisters on the bottoms of feet from Crocs. And that's something that's so easily avoidable. So just keep in mind something that's comfortable for you, if that is Crocs, more power to you. But just make sure that it's something that you're used to walking in. You're going to be doing probably twice as much walking as you usually do, if not a lot more for us with desk jobs. (laughs) Especially at Epcot. 1.2 1.2 miles is the circumference of the walkway around the lake there at World Showcase. And that's just World Showcase, and that's just one loop. So chances are you're going to be doing a lot more than that. Yeah, things that you want to make sure that you bring along with you for a trip to Disney are going to be probably something you would think of for a vacation anyway. But you need to think on a smaller scale. If yes. we're talking a weekend... If you have medication that you know you need to take, bring the medication. However, you don't have to put things in large bottles or try to take large bottles. Of course, now medication, you do need to bring the prescription bottle with you. But simple things like Tylenol, Advil, uh, motion sickness, Dramamine, things like that, that you don't want to bring entire bottles of. Before you go on a trip, go to Target or go to one of the stores like CVS or Walgreens that has a travel aisle. You'll find in that aisle small containers, little screw top, small plexiglass containers that you can put just 10 Advil in or 10 Dramamine in. Or you can do three Tylenol and the three Tums and the three, you know, one something that you're going to take once a day or may, might not need at all. Just take a couple of each pill and put them all in one bottle. You know what they look like. They're fine. As long as you're not trying to share with someone who doesn't know what they're taking, you're going to be okay. The same goes for large bottles of things like shampoo, conditioner. Also on that travel aisle will be small containers 
that you can put liquids into that are under three ounces so that they will be able to be traveling with you in your carry-on luggage. So if you're addicted to your own shampoo and you want to use it while you're on your vacation, fill up one of those little empty bottles and take it with you. Exactly. Now, the H2O products, which actually are going away, but the other Disney products that you're going to find in the hotels are really good products, even in the value resorts. Exactly. And they also sell those in the gift shops. Anything that you forget, it's available in the gift shop. Yeah. So if you're not tied to a specific brand of something for your hair care, you can use what is in the hotel and not even think packing those. Just let them stay home. You'll have to throw it away at the airport anyway because you can't take over three ounces. So (laughs) that's one reason. But also it just saves a lot of room. Don't take a full bottle of anything. Take paper copies of all of your tickets and reservations. That's a very important one. If your phone were to get lost, die on the fly while you're in the park, you need to have copies of your reservations for your park, the tickets themselves to get into the parks, and for any reservations you have for the hotel or restaurants. If you don't have those, it's going to make it very hard to prove you have a reservation if something does not go right either at the main entrance or at the hotel or at the restaurants. Cast members will be able to help you out if you are in a bind, but it's going to be so much faster for you if you don't have to do that, if you have that paper copy that you can just pull out of your backpack and show them. Another thing to consider is reducing the size of your wallet for your trip. I have a travel wallet that is not a wallet. It's just, again, it's made by Loungefly. It's a card holder where the little snap just comes down and covers your cards. One side is for your ID, and then take a credit card, whether or not you think you'll use it. If for emergencies, you've got to have something. Take your insurance card, just in case something happens, and take some cash. And really, you don't need anything else. Leave all the extraneous store cards and all of that at home. That's important, too, right now, is a thing that's been happening in the theme park industry recently, Cedar Fair is doing this with all their parks, is they're going cashless. This is a great idea until the credit card machines stop working. And this has recently happened over and over again at Disneyland Paris, where all of a sudden people are standing in line to get euros out of the machines, out of the ATM, simply because the credit cards aren't working. Now, that's not to say this happens all the time at Disney, but you need to have a plan B for everything that you do when it comes to travel including your air flights and reservation backups like we were talking about. But cash is one of those things that is often overlooked in today's society. Take about $100 per person and just keep it with you in your wallet just in case because you don't want to get into a situation where you cannot eat. That is so true. And I actually had a situation just a couple of weeks ago where my debit card was compromised and I had to shut off my card right then and there and had no more access to my account. So if I was on vacation when that happened and I had no cash or no credit card, I would have been stuck. Yeah, that does not happen very often again, but you have to have a plan B. The other thing that you'll want to make sure that you have with you, of course, is your Magic Band. If you do have a Magic Band Plus, make sure you pack that charger as well. In that same vein, you also want to make sure and pack the chargers for your phone. So your USB cable or whatever type of cable that is. If you do have one of the contactless chargers, You can bring that with you. There are plugs, actually, in a lot of the restaurants, and they're starting to add them in some very odd locations. Yeah, some really cool places. Right outside the Tangled restrooms in a tree stump, there's actually a plug and USB plug. And don't always assume that you know where they are. Um, Just ask a cast member where's the closest place you can plug in, and they'll show you where some of those hidden locations are. So uh, we're all friends here, right? I hope so. We're we're, going to get a little personal. Because one of the best things that we have found to bring with you on a Disney trip is the Gold Bond Friction Defense. Yeah, if you get thigh fry or chub rub when you're walking (laughs) through the parks. Or even blisters on your feet and heels. Yeah, this is great for the more personal spaces of your thighs. This stuff has been a lifesaver for us. It reduces any friction where skin is touching skin. So if you are a Crocs fan, let's go back to the Crocs for a second. Try this on the bottoms of your feet. It has saved me. I'm one of the weirdos who wears sandals when I go to the park. I'm not a tennis shoes fan. My feet feel like they're trapped in tiny little prisons when I wear tennis shoes to the parks all day. It also is good for the tops of your feet. Yes. Anywhere where it's touching your foot, 
where you often get a blister after walking, this stuff saves them. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. We've tried chapstick. I've tried um, deodorant. Tried Net- preemptive band aids. Yeah, it doesn't work. This stuff works. Yeah, and there's there's a couple different ones. The most common one, like the one we talked about, is the anti friction from uh, Gold Bond. There's also one called Body Glide that will work. Yes, and uh, one um, from a company called Mega Babe. There are several different brands. Find the one that you like. Um, we like the Gold Bond, but yeah, Gold Bond is available at again Walgreens, CVS, yep. Walmart. Any place that carries the Gold Bond product usually will have this one as one of the ones you can purchase. And if you get to Disney and you find out that you need this and you don't have it, they don't sell it on Park, or at least they don't get. No. Nope. But you can um, Amazon straight to your hotel, have it <laughs> prime delivered to your front desk, and they'll tell you where it is. You can also take an Uber to the brand new Target at Flamingo Crossing. It's actually on Disney property. Or Instacart. That's true. Yep. Now, of course, you can do that with anything you've forgotten, but this just happens to be one of those things that is a total lifesaver. So if you don't have it and you're there, get yourself some. Yeah. So the only other thing that I can think of that we should talk about is just what to bring on the plane with you. Are there specific things that you like to bring on the plane? I like to bring podcasts, (laughs) including (laughs) this one. Hey, hey. Download the podcast and listen to it on the airplane, but... I listen to old time radio a lot, so I will actually go out and find a couple of podcasts that have some of the old shows that I like and listen to them on the uh, flight. Now, if you're going straight to the parks, this is probably not a great idea because you can't usually plug in your phone to charge and listen to your podcast. But in place of that, Sue brings her Kindle. Yep. I always bring my Kindle. I don't bring it into the parks with me. That's one of those things where I do a little switcheroo at the hotel when we check in. But it always goes on the plane with me, and I always have my earbuds. Also, snacks is a good thing to do. Again, small portion snacks like almonds or kind bars. The other thing I always like to bring is an extra layer. No matter how hot it is where you're coming from, how hot it's going to be in Florida, that plane is going to be chilly. I used to bring a full-on blanket with me. I don't do that anymore, but I always have a hoodie with me just for the airplane. If you have your kids on the flight, please bring them something to play with, but not something that's going to be uh, listenable outside. I, again, don't know why I have to say this in today's society, but please don't bring things that are loud on the airplane that your kids are going to watch the entire three-hour flight. And just one last thing. This is, again, one of those things that everybody tells you and you already know, but I'm just going to say it again for posterity's sake, because please, 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 If you are checking a bag and you choose to do that, that's fine. We choose not to check a bag even when we bring a full-size carry-on because it just eats up time on both ends. However, if you do check a bag, please don't put your medication in there and please don't put your keys in there. Why are you looking at me when you say that? Rod, tell us us why you shouldn't put your keys in your checked luggage. Do you want to talk about it? Picture (laughs) it. Sicily, 1928. (laughs) Okay, actually, picture it. Uh, Tokyo. Tokyo, 2012. Flew back into the U.S. through LAX. Was great. Flew through Dallas. That's great. And the guy goes, hey, would you like to just check that stuff all the way through? And I'm like, sure. They're not going to lose my bag and my backpack. Well, they didn't. They lost just the backpack that had my keys in it. And didn't get it back for three days. I had to rent a car just to get home. Please remember to keep your keys, your medication, and your ID in your carry-on or in your jacket pocket or your lounge fly. Yes, that's another good purpose for a lounge fly. Last piece of the puzzle that we like to do, and this is something that could be considered a splurge for some, but if you're traveling more than two times in one year, get TSA pre. TSA Pre is invaluable nowadays, especially going through Orlando International, where some days you can wait up to an hour plus to get through security. TSA Pre lines in most locations are five minutes or less. In Orlando, they're usually 10 to 15 minutes at even the most peak times. Plus, you get to keep your shoes on, you get to keep your jacket on, you get to keep your uh, whatever sweater you have on. It Computer stays in the backpack? Yes. You just fly through security. I cannot stress how much time and energy this has saved us over the years. It's also been streamlined recently and actually reduced in price. Can you believe it? The government reduced the price on something? 
when we did ours, we had to go up to the nearest big city to do it, the interview. They now offer them at most airports. They offer them at a lot of random locations. There's shopping a, malls. Yeah, there's a Orlando um, International. Yes, you can do it. exactly. Yeah, right there in the in the lobby. And there's there's even a I think it's a Staples or something in town where they're doing them. Like they're everywhere now. You can do your interviews. Yeah, and they usually will take effect within a few weeks. So it's not like you're going to purchase it and immediately go through. However, if you're planning ahead, get the TSA pre. And if you're ever planning a trip to Tokyo Disneyland or Disneyland Paris. Or non-Disney locations. Well, they do exist. No. I know. So weird. At, yeah, at Epcot. Right. <laughs> Europe is spelled E-P-C-O-T, I believe, right? I, I believe it is. So they have what they call world traveler that can be added onto it. And it actually allows you to go through customs much quicker. When we so came back in, much quicker. Oh, my heavens. When we came back in from Disneyland Paris, we saw this gargantuan line of people waiting for customs as we're standing there we hadn't stood there more than two or three minutes and a lady comes walking by going world traveler world traveler we're like yes please we walked up went to the machine just got our face in the little circle and hit the button it printed out a receipt for us and we walked into the u.s it literally took less than five minutes the line that we were looking at would have been at least an hour People were looking at us like we were some kind of celebrities or something because they had no idea what this system was. It paid for itself right then and there. Well, it's like 15 or $20 more to get World Traveler over the cost of your TSA Pre. Trust me, if you're even thinking within the next five years, because TSA Pre and World Traveler combined run five years from the date of purchase, it's worth every penny. Talk about what you pay for Genie Plus or the Express Pass at Universal. Or if you've ever been to a Six Flags or Cedar Fair Park where they're charging upwards of $200 in one day to bypass the line, <laughs> it's worth every penny. You'll agree you're nodding your head right now if you've ever waited in that line at MCO to get home. It's at least worth looking into is what we're saying. So do yourself a favor, look at TSA Pre and World Traveler, and thank us later. <laughs> this has been episode six of the Upcotion Adventure. Thank you for coming along with us today. I'm Rod. And I'm Sue. And we'll see you in line. Bye. Bye.